So Nikki and Moose asked the question, when getting ready to release your podcast, do you have a checklist or guide that you follow? Now, I've got a guide for the actual podcast itself for when I launch that, but I also have one for each episode that I created, and I thought what I would create a video that explains my process and my thinking. So let me switch across to Notion. So as I mentioned, I've got a podcast promotion checklist, but I also have one for episodes. So if I go into that and then click on the most recent episode I have, uh, I have the episode number. So as it builds up, I can sort them by that. I've got the category. So at the moment, I've got creating, posting, asking, collaborating. So if I was like in the sort of creating phase, I could do put put that in, posting, do that. Once I've finished everything off, I mark it as completed and then it's done. I have a chartable link. So I use chartable to create smart links. I set up a subdomain on my website. So I basically put a tracking one. What that will do is it enables me to track each source of traffic that I send out. So I get, again, if I send it to TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube Shorts, wherever else, um, I want to be able to see one, which one gets clicked and two, which one actually gives me downloads of the episodes. And that's something I can use by using something called an SID. Um, so so for, for each platform, I've got specific notes and instructions. So for TikTok, I've got a link there that will take me straight to the video posts in bulk. So what I do is I will create a video. Once I've got the video, I will uh, use cast magic to give me AI titles, descriptions, keywords, all sorts of stuff like that, transcripts, then put it onto my, my website and pod page. What I'll then do is I'll use Opus Clips to, to create snippets from the actual episode. So I can create TikTok videos using those and then direct people through a link back to the full episode for them to watch it. So I'm teasing them with the teaser uh, content uh, with a view to trying to get them to watch the full content. So, and, and I've got standard wording that I can use on each TikTok that gets put out. Again, I'm, I can play around with this, but this is just to, to give me a bit of a... So Anton Schulk, speaking on Bad Decisions with Jim Banks, uh, catch the full episode available at that. And then, as I mentioned, I, I, if I put this SID equals at the end, that will then give me the ability to to track the uh, the interactions with that link from TikTok even though it's the same link that I'm using for the whole episode. Then on YouTube Shorts, again, I've got a link there to the video post in bulk. So what I've done is I've got this sort of process. So use the following at the end of the post. So title, subject to 100 character limits, a uh, couple, of, couple of hashtags at the end of it. Again, I don't know if, if you need to have them in the title. It used to be when you first started YouTube Shorts, you had to have the hashtags in the title. I think you can actually put them at the end. That doesn't really matter. But again, it's important to try and put a couple in there, not too many. Make the first line of the description, the kind of the call to action. So here I've got, again, Anton Schultz speaking on bad decisions with Jim Banks. Catch the full episode. And then I'll put this in bold because I think the first time I uploaded, I actually copied the edit the URL to contain the episode. So I need something to make sure it could be taken out. So I choose shorts from a playlist. I've got a specific playlist on my site for shorts. I put no for altered content, disable automatic chapters, disable automatic placements, automatic places, leave automatic concepts, which is a beta on, add a target keyword based on the topic of the video, choose creative commons attribution from license dropdown to enable people to share it if they want to, choose people and blogs as the category, uh, and then... When you're actually posting it, you can choose a related video, and the related video should be the full episode. This YouTube short is a snippet from the full episode, and what I really want is, one, I want the visibility on the YouTube short, because I tend to get more views on that, uh, and, and actually I get more subscribers as well from YouTube shorts as well. And I want people to know where they can go to the full episode. So I've got the, the link in, in the description, which is the link to my website, so that's got the show notes the resources and all that sort of stuff. Uh, also, I've got affiliate links on there. I could put affiliate links in the comments or the description on YouTube Shorts, but I find it would be probably a, a bit of a waste of time. So I can have the full episode as a regular. And then for Twitter or X, as it's called, again, here's a link to to Twitter itself. Then for LinkedIn, what I do is I have a company page and I have a personal page. So what I tend to do is I'm, I'm, I want to try and get visibility for the company. So I'll post the content on my company page to begin with. And then I'll make the first comment a link to the full podcast episode and then end the post with 
that it's Anton speaking or whatever, and then catch the full episode. Then what I do is I share and like the post as me personally. And the reason I do it that way is if you post initially from your company page, if you wanted to, what you could do is you could run ads to your company page post to give some promotion and, and boost to a particular episode or your podcast. So that's that tip for LinkedIn, that if you post it to your company page first, you can then run ads to promote the episode. And then finally with Instagram Reels, so what I do is to give me the ability to have all of the content I need in one place rather than going, well, the videos are on my computer and I'm on my phone, I wanna be able to do something. I can get obviously these video links uh, directly from Notion that downloads it to my phone. I can then upload it to Instagram. So what I, again, I probably should do a little bit of tweaking with the, with the template here, the checklist for, you know, just to make it sort of better to, to read or maybe try and see if I can find a way to do a thumbnail. I'm no expert by any means on um, Notion, but I, I find it helpful to get me the information I want. So let's go back to Instagram. So again, I'm, I'm trying to use ManyChat. I've seen people like Amy Porterfield and Jenna Kutcher and ManyChat create these keyword comment triggers. So it's taken from the Bad Decisions with Jim Banks episode where we discussed influence, influencer marketing. What I've done here is I've actually made it so that this particular link is a link straight into Instagram for that particular tag. So I can see what kind of gets included there. Uh, comment or DM me the episode number, which is 18. So that's the specific episode for this. Uh, and I'll DM you the link to listen to the full episode at your leisure because a lot of people to promote their podcast episodes, they'll use link in bio, link in bio generally tends not to work. Whereas I think if you use ManyChat and Instagram, it's really powerful to get that. I'm not seeing that at the moment because I'm trying to build my Instagram audience out, but certainly for people that have a decent size Instagram audience, very powerful indeed. And then one thing I would say is if you do decide to use just numbers as the, the trigger keyword, be mindful of the fact that any Instagram DM you receive that has that number in it will trigger that particular automation. I found to my kind of detriment i had one i think i did for episode 10 and i was getting dms from people left right and center with just the number 10 in it so it's just something to be be mindful of try and choose something that's a little bit more uh, relevant to it so you're in a position to to not piss people off by sending them dms for hey here's my podcast episode that you asked for yeah so let me just show you so i'll show you here if i click on say this one this is the easiest seo strategies chrome so, so there's the, the video and obviously from there if I wanted to I could save the video to my desktop and on a mobile it, it does it the right way. So yeah, pretty long-winded reply request for do you have a checklist and how long did it take you to put it together? I think to come up with the concept of putting it together took me quite a while. I needed to map everything out in terms of what I was trying to do for the podcast growing. I'm trying to do it from a base of zero as everyone does when they start a podcast. So I had a podcast base of zero but I was thinking much further ahead to when I get to the point where I'm going to run ads and I'm going to do tracking and that sort of thing and I'm also contemplating uh, providing this sort of functionality as a service for clients for my agency I just thought well if I've got something that, that I've done for myself then it's easier to show it to other people to show them the benefits uh, again for people with maybe a bigger audience or bigger podcast at the moment like I said my podcast is small and and growing I always think begin with the end in mind so i'm always thinking to to when it's much much bigger uh, and having this process here in notion gives me the ability when i do actually get to the point where i outsource some of my creation my promotion that sort of thing to other people there's a documented well thought through process that i've created that makes it much easier for people to kind of follow that this i can say hey this is what you need to do for tiktok this is what you need to do for linkedin this is what you need to do for instagram and then people can go off and follow those instructions in a much easier way than to just say, well, hey, go and promote it on TikTok. And they go, well, how do I do that? So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, subscribe to my channel. 